Alexander, um, kia ora. It's uh, kia ora in, in Māori is welcome. Um, we extend to you our greetings for sharing your film with us. Um, we are very pleased to be able to provide a platform for your film to be seen down here in New Zealand. And certainly we are grateful that you have chosen to join us on our expedition into the digital world. So um, in a future year, and I know you've got another film coming, um, hopefully that film will bring you back to New Zealand physically so that we can actually show you what uh, New Zealand hospitality is. But to start off with, Alexander, and we share a similar name, so um, as we all agree, it's better for you to be Alexander and I'm Alex so that we have a differentiation. But uh, we do have some similarities in that you are someone who is obviously a documentary buff, someone who directs documentary, someone who's living in Belgium, and all those uh, things that I totally adore, because I lived in Belgium, as I mentioned to you before, and obviously I'm involved in documentary. Um, Belgium is an interesting country because it's the center of a lot that's happening in Europe. So therefore, for me, um, I'm curious to know um, how you came across this particular piece by Thierry Snitz, um, how you got involved in it, and um, in terms of a full-fledged dance performance that is um, that features male frontal nudity in all its performers, has that ever been done before in Europe, or is this the first time? that this performance has been captured on screen. Uh, Alex, thank you, first of all, very much for having Bear in uh, Doc Edge Festival. It's, it's a really uh, honor for me. Plus, uh, yes, it's my first feature film, so for me it's a great feeling. I mean, it's online, but I hope still film will be released uh, offline too. Uh, as for the question, um, it's, uh, well, most of my films are related to a dance because I was very interested about that subject and uh, for a while I was exploring a lot about that. Uh, and uh, once I was in Belgium, uh, because I took a part in Doc Nomads, it's um, a documentary filmmaking program. And uh, when I was there, I was exploring also a dance scene in Belgium, in Brussels. And then I came across uh, T.B. Smith and uh, his uh, choreographer. So for me, it was very intriguing because TV was dealing with uh, provocative performances. Uh, also, he likes the subject as sexuality, gender. Uh, yes, he works quite often with uh, male dancers, uh, also performing nude. So to answer for your question, if it was the first time in Europe, definitely not, because um, it's been for quite a while. And in Europe, there are so many uh, dance companies which are presenting their performances with uh, frontal male nudity, with frontal female nudity. And uh, th that's, I wouldn't say a common thing, but it's quite often we see that. So it's not something which is forbidden. Mm. But what attracted me a lot is uh, that I was invited to be, um, and to be able to see the process of the creation. And that for me was exciting because normally we don't have that access. We see the finished complete piece. So I think that attracted me, and uh, yeah. Yes. And that certainly is one of the reasons why we were attracted to your film, was because, um, you know, quite often we would go to a dance performance and we would, we would see a final product, but we don't actually understand what has gone on in the evolution of the product, um, yes. how the characters and the dancers came together, um, how a particular choreographer or a, a, a dance troupe a director, creative director might have taken the steps and tried to put it together. So for us, that was really interesting. Um, certainly, it seemed like you spent a bit of time on this film. Uh, I mean, how much time was spent in the research, the development, and then on to the production and then the delivery to this stage? Well, for most of that kind of independent films, of course, it's a long process. I mean, sometimes some some directors are much more lucky, but uh, it wasn't my case. I was lucky with a great subject, but was not lucky with uh, a huge support. 
although I get a really, really great support from TV and his company, because actually TV was the main supporter for this project, even though I have some critical point of view in the film about what he was doing, but still he was very glad about that, and uh, it was very interesting working with him. So we started from the audition, which was in, 2000, uh, in the end of 2015, and in 2016, uh, close to the end of the year, they, they were building the performance. So we took about two years of uh, the production, and then many years of trying to break through, mm -hmm. to try to find the editor, um, financing uh, to complete the film, which was not successful, so I actually I edited the film myself in the end. Right. So, uh, so you, you mentioned funding. How, do, how was the film funded? It was, yeah, it's a complex question because it was uh, mainly my own resources and partly it was TV resources. So, I mean, TV was the main investor for the film and then it was uh, my resources because I was uh, also a cinematographer and uh, uh, wow. the sound guy <laughs> in the film because I had all the equipment all around myself and uh, yeah. that was yeah. the challenge. Yeah, I'm sure but, that was a challenge. I mean, what, what in, in terms of of all of that, the fact that you could do so much yourself, what was the most difficult part about it? Well, I would say bottles, plastic bottles was the most difficult part. <laughs> uh, well, I explain, well, the thing is because, you know, uh, when I started this process, I didn't expect that the dancers will have always these bottles with themselves because it was the summer when we yeah. started and TV himself as well. And I hate this object, you know, like when it's in the screen, it lo doesn't look so <laughs> so I was trying to to take it out, but since I was alone with the camera uh, placed all around, I always was running to a frame taking the bottle out. And once I said to TV, I said, TV, please, can you just not have the bottle? And he said, of course, Alexander, I'm sorry. And then just 10 minutes later, I see the bottles again. So for me, that was a crucial thing. But if to be if to be serious, of course, working alone, it's it's a challenge for any director. Although you have a lot of freedom to choose your focus, but still, when you don't have a partner to at least have some, how to say, another point of view which uh, helps you to change maybe, maybe your direction, that would be helpful. But so far, I'm glad uh, for the result. And also, like just a small comment about the first question of the idea of the film. Uh, I think it's quite important to mention that uh, TV has a lot of political aspects which he placed into his film. And what was very interesting in that performance, dealing with the male nudity and the nudity itself, he was uh, he wanted to say that the nudity is more complex subject, so it's not so tribal how we think about that. And uh, another important thing was about uh, nudity being um, an expression of a total freedom, because you know, like what we're witnessing a lot, and that was another question you asked about how many performances with frontal nude or with nudity we have uh, in Europe. It's a lot of taboo still on about that, about the nudity, about especially male nudity. And I think that was another uh, idea which he had by placing uh, only naked men in, in, in his performance. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to, to know, you're saying that here you had help uh, and helping desk and fun part of the actual production itself. Um, did he see himself as a creative producer or did he just see himself as a backup? I mean, what was the relationship between you and him in terms of artistic direction or discussions? With, you know, did, did he did he have much to do with wanting to see your daily rushes to try to figure out, you know, his head in his head what he thought might be coming through as a story? Uh, he, he he started to help financially. Let's say only when it was editing post production time. So during the shooting, I was absolutely free. It was my personal equipment, uh, my resources. Actually, he didn't understand until the late stages of the film what actually is going to be in the film. Okay. But his only, only concern he had, he didn't want to make film which kind of portray him as this amazing, great choreographer, you know, like th there are these films when showing this persona. So he was glad that that was, my, was not my approach in that project. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that he, he was happy about that, but the rest he didn't understand until the me showing him rough cuts. Right. Okay. And, and when, is he happy with the film? I mean, now that you've finished the film, he's watched it, you know, has he given you, what sort of feedback have you received? 
Well, for me, it was interesting that the most, uh, how to say, like difficult scene when I'm showing TV, like uh, behaving in a way that you don't expect from a choreographer. Let's say not from choreographer. Okay, choreographers are emotional people, but just when he overstepping the limit, how you can express yourself in some of the ways. For me, it was fine that, you know, I still think there were some interesting situations. He was laughing and he was smiling. And uh, that was for me so, uh, re re how to say, like, no, to see that, that, yeah, that, that it was not a huge problem for him to yeah. accept all sides of his personality because he's a, of course he's a character and he has, he's not like a good or bad, he has all these different sides. And for me, it was great as a film director to put yeah. all of that, not only one side, but some, which sometimes and quite often we see about some of the um, characters in the film. Yeah. You know, being mute in itself, um, for a lot of people, is still something that you have to get used to. It's not, it's not, you know, while we not be born naked, um, we're spending years and years of wearing clothes, so to suddenly be mute, you require a little bit of time in adjusting to that and adjusting to the way you behave, let alone knowing that there's a camera in the room recording everything that you're doing. So, I mean, I'm just wondering, how did you make your camera so unobtrusive? Or, or were you just there with the camera and they just, they, they were just natural, they didn't care, they just behaved. So you became part of the actual furniture and they didn't even notice you? I mean, how did you actually operate your camera in that situation? Well, of course, when we're studying in the school and we do films and then later we do some projects, we're... I mean, and at least in my case, I, I, I learned how to become more or less invisible, like a fly on the wall, we call it. Uh, but with the dancers, of course, they used to expose themselves. They, they all were aware of the camera being there. And it was funny that, you know, doing something, they were sometimes like watching me or uh, having some glance on me or like doing some sexual movement, just knowing that the camera is recording that. I didn't include these moments. So I choose, of course, the moments which... Uh, Obviously, they were more real. Yeah. And one of my favorite scene in the film, which I was fighting and really wanted to include, is the shower scene, where uh, I'm not there. My, I, I left the camera and I left, and I put the microphone okay. And that was the only moment when they knew that the camera is rolling. They knew that I'm going to see the materials later on, because I know what was happening. Yeah. And they started yeah. fooling around. And uh, for me, that was the place where they were, let's say, can say it themselves at some point because uh, the shower room was the place where <clears throat> TV was not present. It was the dancer space because yeah. in the in the in the room when they were rehearsing, that was his control. But there, they were themselves, and uh, that was the moment when we glance. It's not a realistic moment of something sexual. It's more about seeing this world in the dancing between each other and. Uh, for me, that was amazing to discover it later on. I was laughing so much watching what they were doing, yeah. uh, just to tease me. But uh, I thought it's important to include that scene. Yeah, I, I wondered about that because when I was watching the shower scene, I was wondering whether you were there because quite often you felt that they were playing to the camera. And I, I had the thought, okay, he probably wasn't there and the camera was there and these guys were just playing to the camera. But in another moment there, I might have thought to myself, oh, maybe he was there because they were looking straight into the camera. And you kind of figured, oh, maybe he, they were actually being playful and teasing and, and you know, giving Alexander a bit of a hard time you know, for being in, in the shower room. So it was, a, you know, for me, you know, it, it could have been both looking at it as an audience member. But it, I'm, I'm curious, I mean, as a director, um, have you actually worked with any uh, prolonged nudity before, or was this your first uh, expo so so-called exposure to nudity? No, that that was the first project I worked with, and uh, previously I did some dance related to Buto dance, it's Japanese uh, dance, and there was like some female nudity partly, but. Uh, that was my first ever experience to working with the dancers. But again, like for them, it was not a big problem, let's say, because they knew from the beginning they're going to perform it, and they mm -hmm. knew that they're going to be camera. And some of them, they had experience before being recorded uh, in camera naked. So they just were curious what's going to be in the result. And they all of them, 
waiting for such a long time to have this film out, <laughs> asking me like when, 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 and now they're so excited, but still wondering when they could see it in Europe. Right, of course. I mean, did you did you find that you needed time yourself to acclimatize to the? I mean, to become um, adjusted to be more integrated into the idea that you were shooting in this type of environment and this type of situation with all these men make it all the time. I mean, or was it something you just found that you just found really easy from the get go? Well, of course, just watching especially auditions when I, I, I didn't know anyone from the dancers, they were just new people arriving. I was keeping a bit of a distance and just the ones who were uh, very open, I were more, much brave to overstep that distance. But normally, yeah, there was uh, some distance for me to start being very much close to them. And especially when we did the rehearsals, that was for me the moment when I was absolutely free being with them and even some some people were asking, "Are you naked when make it yourself when you were doing the recordings?" And uh, I wasn't, but um, why should I? I mean, I was not performing. But for me, it was not also a problem if it was needed by them. But also, what I wanted to, because you said about male nudity, and I think it's also very important to say that I was glad to, working also with the male nudity because. Uh, in visual art in general, we see that uh, the balance of the male nudity and female nudity is changing. Because previously and historically, uh, we're not talking about ancient time, but like recent time, female nudity was the main one, the focus, uh, because this is what men wanted to see. And men were the main audience which were uh, mm. asking for the content. They wanted to see female naked body. And now the situation is changing. And for me, it was interesting to portray male body as normally we portray female body. And uh, it's an interesting factum of uh, visual uh, art and what, what we're seeing in audience request. So working with male naked dancers was affecting me a lot in understanding how, uh, what an interesting time we're living in and how the gender are mixing more and more. And uh, mm. now everybody are, how do you say, this everybody can see what they want to see and how to say that yeah. correctly. Yeah, I, I get it. No, I, I understand that the film is also playing with our sister festival in Canada, Hot Dogs, um, which is online as well. Um, we are very close to Hot Dogs, so we were, we were all quite uh, suitably gratified and surprised when we found that we both programmed your film. Um, have, has the film been shown in Canada already, or is it still to be shown? So, who are in Ontario and Canada, they can still see the film until uh, June 24, so it's still running, and uh, after June 24, it's finished, so, mm. yeah, that, that will be the... So it's still... But it's only for Ontario region. Okay. And then you had a Q&A with that particular film and with um, Hot Dogs? Yes, I have uh, a with Chris, and yeah. it was also very interesting. But yeah. what I'm happy right now, because I decided to go for this online Q&A, because there it was pre-recorded, and now it's really gives to director a bit more drive and feeling of excitement to speak about the film, not just being relaxed and knowing that it will be edited. No, you have uh, the moment now to share your experience uh, about the yeah. project. And that's the idea why we wanted to have live Q&As, because... We wanted to try to uh, pretty much simulate the experience of being at a live festival because if you were here, we would both be on the stage right now talking and we would have uh, the audience listening and I'm, you know, obviously waiting to um, talk to you and, and to participate in providing you questions from the audiences as well. How did the, um, has anyone in Belgium seen this film yet? Has it had any kind of, even no, no cast and crew, no nothing? We're, we're planning, uh, because I'm, right now I'm sending you greetings from Russia. I'm in the north of Russia for the moment. Uh, uh, and uh, in a few weeks I'm flying back to Brussels and uh, we already talked with TV because he would love to have, let's say, kind of a premiere for people who participated to part in the project uh, for Belgium, for Brussels. So we will, we will organize that for sure. But also, there will be plans for going in Europe with the film, and hopefully it will be Brussels as well. 
there are several festivals which are very much interested to participate. So yes, for the moment, Belgium has no idea about it. No idea yet. We, we, we have some, uh, one who obviously uh, comes in the UK asking if the film will be seen in the UK or in Britain. Um, I'm sure you'll do very well there. We, we will, we will try because now I'm, I'm having the distributor and uh, he's doing the festival um, strategy. I hope we will reach uh, Europe as much as possible, including uh, Britain and uh, Eastern Europe. And yeah, for me, of course, it would be interesting how the audience in Russia will react for the film. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have much platforms for that, but still, there are a few festivals. For me, it would be interesting. Uh, I, I would definitely talk about it. And uh, I'm not presuming that you're going to be taking it to Ukraine. <laughs> Why not? They have some festivals in Ukraine too. Yeah, and, it goes in Ukraine. <laughs> um, but, are there any, well, um, what, what sort of festivals are you um, trying to get it in? I mean, obviously, you want to get it into the international and the documentary film festival. There are probably some really good dance festivals. And some really good, um, you know, clearly it will be of interest to LGBTQ audiences as well. So you do have quite a range of festivals that you can go to. Well, as you correctly said, it's for both because, I mean, it, it, we're trying now with uh, all kinds of festivals, including queer and LGBT festivals and also uh, the main festivals. But since they're still open for you, in premiere and for the uh, regional premieres, we're trying first to see where we're gonna go. But yeah, it's the first. I don't know. For me, this is my first feature film. I don't have that much experience of the feature film presenting because previously it was short films, and uh, I think it's exciting moment. Although it's all online for now, but I really hope we will switch to another format, and then I will explore more about uh, going to festivals and meeting people or at least having feedbacks, which are the best. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's really great that you have done this film. You know, it takes a lot of, um, uh, it takes a lot of patience because I've uh, had the opportunity of uh, being head of a performing arts school. I have done a lot of work around filmmakers trying to do films with dancers. Um, it's not easy. It's a wonderful medium, it's a wonderful art form, but actually uh, to capture a dance in its pure essence and to be able to bring the vitality and the, the actually the movement of a dance into a camera is not easy. So I, I commend you on what you've done. I think that you've done a really good job, you know, and, and I hope that the film is going to be seen by as many people as possible. And certainly from our point of view, you know, we, we would um, very much like you to be able to say to people around the world that it, it played at Jock Edge and it was an Oscar qualifying festival and it played at Hot Talks, it was an Oscar qualifying festival. So, you know, there are two, two bright stars there that you can put on your resume so that, you know, this film can be taken a lot further. But, um, you know, I'm just curious, just one last thing that I might ask you is, what is the one thing that you took away from the making of this film that's going to help you with your career? I mean, what is the one thing that you learned from the making of this film that is going to, it doesn't matter whether you're in dance, doesn't matter whether you never deal with nudity again, but it's the one thing that you learned that is going to make you that much better craftsperson for the future. Well, I think that for many filmmakers, it's important to find their own voice in the film. How can you portray yourself in the film? What is your position in the film? And I think it's a feature film. It's not a short film. It's like uh, you're building a long story, but still you would like your own voice to be noticed in the film. So I, I think at a quite late stage, I found that I, I found that with the rhythm, when it's going long shots and then very dynamic images, and I, I think that this experimenting, like the feeling of... Uh, Trying to experiment more with what you're creating is, uh, I learned very much. I mean, I always try to experiment with my films, but this film, I was, in the beginning, I was thinking it's going to be quite different from what it became, I'm, I'm in terms of uh, the composition. And I think for me, it was important to explore because, as you said, the film related to a dance, it's, uh, 
a very tricky one because dancer is very visual. It really friendly with the camera and sometimes you can be just watching that but we're talking about documentary it's not a registration of a dance performance it's a story and if we sometimes too much in a dance then we might be tired at some point just mm -hmm. seeing only dance okay we see a naked body we see all these beautiful dancers and some people might be excited just to watch it but for storytelling sometimes it can be very challenging and I think that was interesting in that project not to only show the part of the dance, which is brilliant. You know, like this, the whole performance is very interesting one. And yeah. I have a video of the whole performance. But I especially didn't include the performance in the film. So actually you don't see the performance. You see the yeah. parts of it, small parts and how they were building. Because I felt, I still wanted to say something different with the film. I wanted to have a different message in that film. And for me it worked. Mm. So, so what you do have in your archives now is a whole lot of uh, B-roll, a lot of um, cuts that you've left on the cutting room floor, and whole performance. So there's quite a lot that you can actually still do with the film if you wanted to. And I'm sure that those people that watch it will probably be saying to you, and I, I will say the same thing, I would love to see the whole performance. Personally, you know, obviously you get intrigued and you want to know more about it. And of course, you know, I like to see all the um, the um, backstory um, a lot more of what is going on because we know that you can't capture everything and put everything into the film. So, you know, for me, a director's cut or, you know, any kind of additional footage will probably go down like a treat for everyone. Just an idea. Yeah. No, but you're absolutely right because uh, at the moment I have... Uh on the YouTube channel, I call it Bear Web. It's a special project where I'm going to release scenes which never made it to the film, which shows much more universe of that project. But I'm keeping it a little bit because still uh, I was suggested to have more curiosity about the film premiering on the festival rather than just releasing the series, but it's going to be there. So if somebody would be more interested, they could find it. All YouTube. right. That's great. Look, uh, Alexander, thank you so much again. Um, the next time we speak, we hope that you'll be in New Zealand with your next project. Uh, all the best from all of us. Um, know that you've got friends in New Zealand, so we look forward to hearing more about you.